Okay, hello everybody. It's Greg Hahn here again uh, in our video series on building and scratching and a lot of things. This morning we're going to be demonstrating fiberglass application. Uh, it's something I get a lot of questions on. I mean, a lot of questions because it's uh, one of those things that unless you've seen it done or had it demonstrated to you, you have no, uh, no idea where to start. So we're going to show you how to fiberglass, how to start the type of cloth, the tools we use. And, and my method over 20 years of experience, 25 years of experience of how to do it and get it right uh, and make as little mess as possible because this process can be a little messy if you're not careful. Uh, this morning we're going to be of course working on a boat like we did in the last video because that's what I'm presently working on and we, whether you're doing a boat, an airplane, a rocket or what have you, you're still, the, the methods of fiberglassing, the methods of building of course all pretty much stay the same. Uh, normally you're going to do the bottom of a project first and then go to the top which means the seams lap over and the seams don't show. Fiberglassing it's not that big of a deal because you're going to be sanding and filling anyway uh, but just like in Monaco it's pretty easy to start with the bottom and then go to the top so we're going to be doing the bottom this morning. Um, to go to the tools, that it's, it's a pretty simple tool set to do fiberglassing. Uh, we start with a mixing cup mixing the right amounts of the resin and the thinner to get the, the resin how you want it so it cures and flashes off properly. You need a good measuring cup. You can get these at hobby dealers. They're just a, a standard pharmaceutical type cup that measures in drams and cc's and ounces. Uh, you need a red solo cup. And I say solo because it's the brand I use because for some reason the plastic these are made out of is it doesn't get affected by the denatured alcohol and the resins. If you use other brand of cups or what have you, you're going to, sometimes they'll eat the bottom out of the cup and you end up wearing half your resin. You really don't want that. Uh, the next tool is a, is a simple two inch brush. I like using two inches. You can get these in three quarter inch, two inch, four inch. You can go to uh, Harbor Freight Tools, whatever, buy these 50 in a box for about eight bucks. They're a throwaway. You use them one time, put them in the trash. You don't try and clean them. It's a waste of time because they're going to be soaked full of resin. They're a camel hair brush. They, 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 the, the bristles have a tendency to come out once in a while, but it doesn't hurt you at all. And you need a throwaway brush, so that's your easiest brush. Like I said, go to Harbor Freight Tools. You can get those cheap. We're going to be using denatured alcohol. Denatured alcohol is what we use to thin the epoxy resin. It gets the moisture out of the resin and makes it flash off a lot better. Uh, and makes it and makes it flow good. Um, use I'll show you later, but I use old Exacto knife handles that you don't use anymore if they're broken or smashed because I use them to death. I wear them out, but they make good part holders down the road. You need a very good pair of scissors. Fiberglass cloth is very difficult to cut. Uh, an old pair of scissors doesn't get it. You're going to have to go out and, and, and to the store and buy you a brand new pair of scissors and then mark across them fiberglass only so that your wife or whoever doesn't pick these up or your kid doesn't pick them up and use them on the chain link fence out back because they have to be sharp to cut this. If you don't have a real good pair of scissors, just a standard straight edge razor blade will cut it too, but then you've got to have a cutting board and some other tools. So I just like to keep a good pair of scissors around to cut the stuff. Um, my choice brand is Zepoxy for resin and uh, it works really good. Has a, when I mix it with a thinner, it has a four hour pot life. You're actually going to get about an hour and a half of spreading, but it takes about four to five hours for it to flash. Um, it's waterproof, lays out really nice, sands real nice, uh, and it's just. And, and, but there's you got West Systems, you've got uh, several other brands of resin. I just happen to use epoxy, plus it's a hobby and it's easy to get a hold of. <clears throat> so let's get started here. Um, what we have here is some of the wing parts of the boat, which are made out of balsa, and this part here already has two coats on it, um, so you can get an idea of what that looks like. That has the cloth, and then a second coat of resin, which starts to fill the weave. Normally, I use three coats, and I mix it to where the the, the resin is is the consistency of water, so that it impregnates the wood. And what you've got here is you've got a situation where Epoxy resin is anaerobic, which means that it cures and flashes in a non-oxygen environment. And what it does is, is it will impregnate the wood and seep down into the pores and essentially turn a piece of balsa wood into a rock. 
Okay, balsa wood's very vulnerable, it dents very easily, but once you impregnate it with the thin epoxy resin and it cures in those pores, it turns it into a piece of steel. You can't, it's very difficult to break this. So that's one of the reasons we use the fiberglassing method is because it adds great strength to, to the project that you're doing. And normally to, just to show what, what this looked like to begin with, you take a piece of cloth and you lay it over the part and then you essentially just glass each side of the part. You glass one side, let it cure, turn it over, put a piece of cloth on this side and glass it. You sand the edge before you put the next coat on, which finishes your edges around. And this is where this tool comes in handy because I take old X-Actos and I use them. I put the, uh, the blade in and you have an automatic part holder so that in the second and third coats, you can coat both sides at the same time lay it off the edge of the table with some weight and then it can sit there and cure. So these are handy little tools after a while. But these are the wing parts that are ball so that you can see how it works. Okay, next thing I'm gonna talk about is the fabric, the fiberglass cloth. And uh, I buy it in a roll from uh, nickcerulli.com. It's non-starched one ounce cloth, which means it weighs one ounce per square yard, which is a three foot by three foot piece weighs one ounce, which Weight doesn't mean a whole lot, even in even in even in airplanes, uh, it weighs about the same as monocoat. If you do it right, keep the resin thin, you're going to get it on about the same weight as monocoat. Uh, the main thing I like about the cloth that I use from from Nick is the fact that it's non-starched, which means it's completely limp within itself. A lot of your cloth is starched so that it so that the weave stays solid. This snags a little easy, but it but it goes around corners very easily. And so look for cloth that's non-starched. It can be hard to find sometimes because most of, of the stuff that I've gotten from West is starched and it, you can lay it off the side of a table and it'll still hold its shape. But this is pretty limp. It goes around corners real easy and doesn't, doesn't make a, a very many wrinkles in it at all. Makes it, makes it simple to go around corners. <laughs> I've already got the pieces cut onto the onto the boat and ready to go there. You just literally take your scissors and cut your pieces and and try and do as many pieces as you can on the different surfaces, whether it's an airplane or a boat or whatever. You you can go around corners, but only to a certain extent with anything. So you've got to kind of choose your pieces. We started at the bottom, so I'm going to mix up some resin here. Show you. Normally the uh, Resin that I use is epoxy. You can use West Systems. You can use uh, any of the finishing resins. Great Plains makes a finishing resin. They're all good. They're all waterproof. Um, they, they pretty much all that I've used sand real well. It's just as epoxy is a hobby product. And it's easy to get. You can get it at the hobby shop. So that's why I use it. And this is the finishing resin. I normally mix a 50-50 mix of the resin which makes one part and then a second part of denatured alcohol and it gives it the consistency of water essentially. So um, we'll start out. One thing to keep in mind, just a, just a tip or a pointer, is you've got resin and hardener and if you're gonna have a, an out of, out of ratio mix, you want more resin and less hardener because if you go too much hardener, it slows down the cure time and sometimes it can make it so it won't cure at all. So you always, if you're, if you're going to be out of ratio, you want more resin than hardener. So normally I start with the resin and then I go a little weaker on the hardener on the mix. But you take out your little mixing cup and uh, you try and try and judge. It, it can be difficult and you can always mix more because of the pot life. But normally I'll start out with a, with a, a, a measurement where I'll put half the cup in resin and half in hardener and then mix it and put it in the... Uh, in the solo cup so let me get this mixed up here real quick works pretty nice if you can see I just pull the resin out and it's pretty it works pretty nicely take it up okay we're at about 15 cc's there and we'll throw the hardener in bring it up to about 30 cc's makes it easy and then you just simply mix it up in your little cup give it a little pre-mix to get the two parts in you know, be careful not to slop it around because uh, you can always use the denatured alcohol to clean it off your hands because epoxy resin always seems to be a little sticky and gooey 
and just drop it in the solo cup. It's pretty simple. I know this is rudimentary, but you do some get that stuff in there. Okay, and you take the same cup so you're not wasting everything. These are a one time use, this is a throwaway deal. And you put your uh, about 30 cc's of denatured, throw it in the cup, close it up so it doesn't smell the room. Okay, lay your cup down, give that a mix. The first thing you're going to see, it gets really cloudy and foggy. And what that is, is the denatured alcohol pulling the moisture out of the resin. Um, and so once you keep mixing, once it's mixed up good, it becomes clear again. But don't be alarmed if it, if it gets cloudy when you first start mixing because it's all it's doing is dissipating the moisture that's already in the resin. Get your brush out. And normally I like to, especially these cheap brushes that I use for throwaway, I run through the bristles to get any loose bristles out. You can pull them off the cloth, they sand off. It's not a big problem if you get a bristle on the cloth, but um, you know, it's always handy just to get the uh, bristles out of the way here. Get this moved. Now, when you start laying cloth, you don't want anything in your way. You just get everything backed out, which is kind of difficult because I'm trying to keep in, inside of the camera here. But let me slide this over so I can show you how this works. The most important thing about fiberglassing is to make sure your resin's thin so it's like water. And I'll show you here in a second what I mean by it's like water. And since cloth is non-directional, you always want to start in the center and move out. In other words, I'm going to start the resin in the middle and then I'm going to make a swipe and a swipe and a swipe and a swipe and slowly go to the corners and just in a big pattern circle, just keep slowly working out farther and farther. And what that does is make it completely wrinkle free and it just, it, it actually takes the shape of what you're putting it on. I'm going to show you how I start this out. You just dip it in and, and the resin is like water. If you can see it coming off the, you can see it coming off. It literally is, is the consistency of water. You get some in the brush and you literally make a dot in the middle, just like this. And on your initial coat, you want to make sure and, and, and don't skimp on the resin. You want a lot of resin because like I said, you want that resin impregnating that wood, making it a lot stronger. So you're twofold here. You're giving it a you're giving it a solid base for a paint job, and you're also impregnating and making the wood a lot more solid. Okay, and you just slowly work your way out. <clears throat> you start from the center, and you work out. You work your way out. And you make a cross in the center, and then I start angling, and you and you'll see the bubbles and the wrinkles slowly go away as you work your way out. Once you get all the resin out and down and you're as far as you want to go, uh, you're going to have some hanging over the edges. You always want your pieces to be over. Once it's cured, then you come back with a simple X-Acto knife, a number 11 blade, and you trim the edges all the way around. Hit them with some 220 sandpaper to get the, the cloth back to the edge. And then you will go back, after you get all the cloth on, you go back for a second coat of resin, uh, pretty much over the entire pr piece, project, whatever you're working on. You go back with a second coat. And then, I, and then you sand in between with 220, maybe 180 to get the high spots and the rough spots down. You go back with the second coat. I always use three coats because it takes the first coat to impregnate the wood. The second coat fills the weave of the cloth. And the third coat makes it smooth and, and ready for primer after you get it sanded. We're going to, I'm going to put some glass around this front cone and to show you just how well this, this stuff can conform 
around the edges here. You notice this is a major compound curve coming around. Okay, if you don't want it catching on anything. And you just keep spreading it away from the center and the thing will actually, you can literally get this cloth to go right around that corner like a basketball. It's like if you were covering the front of a basketball. And always go away from the corner. Okay. See how that's conforming to that curve, and then when you do the top, then you you'll trim this off. You'll come across to the top and lay the next top cloth over, and then the two come together, and you've got a, a perfect union there in the front. Do a little more here on the edge. And the, and the more you go away from it, you see how that goes around the corner. Works out really well. Nice. Application of the fiberglass done properly with thin coats and 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 not adding a bunch of globs everywhere. You can essentially do this as light as you can monocoat and. Uh, so you're not adding a whole lot of weight. It's not difficult to do. It makes a nice surface for painting. And uh, so if you just take your time, uh, do your resin properly and do everything thin, you can uh, come out with a really nice project. So the next time you build an airplane or build a boat or what have you, and you want to do a paint job instead of uh, monocoating or, or one, of the, one of the other finishes that are a single application, give this a try. I'm sure you'll you, you'll learn in the process and you'll think, wow, this is, this is actually going to work out good and I can use whatever colors I want to paint at the end of the day. So uh, anyway, give it a try. I think you'll, uh, you'll have success with it.